PCs, tablets, phones, and beyond. And segments that are still being developed. People talk about wearables and the Internet of Things. Those are emerging areas that have far-reaching opportunities for all of us in this room. Those are areas we'll show you we're going to go lead into. So let me show you what I mean. Let's start with the first area here. We are in the process of re-architecting the data center. The data center revolution is already going on. We talk about big data, talk about the number of devices that are connected to the data centers, the cloud. We talk about software and software-defined systems, security. All of this requires the innovation and architecture that Intel has led for years. You saw Diane announced last week our Atom C2000 family, the Aviton and Rangely. These are examples of us leading in architectural changes in the data center. Today, you'll see us announce our Xeon E5, which is the other end of the data center performance, the Xeon class system. From the high end to the low end of the data center, from software-defined networks, networking, storage, Intel has the architecture that we plan on leading. This is an area that we've led in for years, but we're not standing still. We're going to re-architect, we're going to keep driving innovation here. I want to take a second now and move from the data center to the PC. The PC is in the process of reinventing itself. There's more innovation in the PC than I've ever seen before. And there's some of that innovation that's relatively obvious. It's battery life, it's form factor, it's capability. But what I want to really show you is that it's not just those form factor type things. It's really listening to the users, to the developers, to what do people want in these devices. So let me show you with just the start of one of these items. You saw us announce earlier this year our fourth generation core product, Haswell. What I'm showing you here is our Haswell Y device. This is an HP system. There will be more systems as we exit this year. Become fanless Core i5, Core i7 devices. This provides the battery life, everything that people have been asking for in a fanless device. I think looking back two years ago, if we'd all said you'd see fanless core based products on stage here, we'd have been surprised. They're here, they're coming to market. The next thing I want to talk about is silicon. I've got to talk about silicon. Can't have an Intel presentation without talking about Moore's Law a little bit here. I'm here to introduce the first 14 nanometer PC. This is a Broadwell-based system. It is fully out of development of 14 nanometers. I'm here to show you working system. Prove it, I'll go into cut the rope and play the game. But this is it, folks. 14 nanometers is here, it's working, and we'll be shipping by the end of this year. You saw the performance of Haswell, fanless-based systems. That 14 nanometer product on Broadwell provides another 30% power improvement, and we're not done yet. That's as far as we've been able to test it so far. In addition, we'll have the same type of performance improvements that you'll see it, that you've seen on Haswell-type products. 
So 14 nanometers is absolutely a reality. It's absolutely coming to a PC near you. And you'll see it in product next year. But that's not enough. Consumers want even more. What I showed you was more the standard form factors. What we've really been working on is what we call the two-in-one. And the two-in-one really is the effort to show it's the best of both worlds. Consumers talked about having to carry multiple devices, a tablet, a PC. And so the innovators at Intel and our partners have come up with the two-in-one. It's the best of both worlds. It's a PC when you want a PC. It's a tablet when you want a tablet. It comes in many form factors. I'm showing you a Bay Trail based one here. Here's another core based system here. This one's very innovative. The tablet, the PC, just, and the, and the um, keyboard just disconnect. But it's not just two systems. There's an industry of innovation going on around these form factors. And so I want to show you this wall here of two in ones. By the end of this year, we'll have over 60 systems in market at price points as low as $400. So when people talk about having a two-in-one device that can truly compete in this marketplace, these are the products that are going to do it. This is where the PC is headed. Okay, so we've talked about the PC. There's an obvious question. What about tablets? Got to answer that at Intel, right? We're here. We've got Intel tablets. They're in the market. I've got here a Lenovo-based tablet in my hand. And yes, it's fully functional. We intend to drive leadership into this market. We have assets and technologies that nobody else can bring to this marketplace. We can provide the same form factor to an OEM, and they can choose between Windows, Android, Core, Atom. The choices and the innovation they can do with these devices is tremendous. And again, to show you that it's not just one device, we've shown you a wall of devices here with systems that will be coming to market for price points as below $100 this holiday. Yes, that's below $100 system price point for holiday with Intel. bringing this leadership to other devices. So we've talked about the data center, PCs, tablets. We need to talk about phones. I'm here to show you the world's first 22 nanometer phone. game with even longer battery life. But wait, we've also got LTE. One of the things that's been holding Intel back from this portion of the industry has been our lack of LTE. This phone is working on LTE right now with Intel Silicon. We are shipping data at LTE today with Voice 3G. By the end of the year, for products next year, we'll be shipping true data LTE and voice LTE in our phones. <laughs> we are here. But in a market like that, simply providing great silicon and getting into the LTE devices isn't enough. You have to keep innovating. So, let's talk about LTE Advanced. 
Consumers want data. What they want is faster data. They want to be able to get data to their devices at a much, much faster rate. What I'm showing you here is on the right-hand side is the data rate to that phone. It's running about 35 megabits per second. Our team in San Diego has been working on carrier aggregation. And in just a couple of seconds, you'll see this actual device turn on carrier activation and shift from 35 megabits per second to approximately 70 megabits per second. We know that we can continue this and get upwards of over 150 megabits per second. Hopefully it'll switch here pretty soon. But your demo has never worked just the way you want it to. Time always takes a little bit longer. Let's see if it shifts. <laughs> something shifted. Uh, hopefully they're going to get that back up. If I can get through this, I'll see if I can come back to that one. Oh, there it is. So, this is 35 to 70 megabits per second. As I said, our plans is before we bring this to production to get upwards of 150 megabits per second and above. Um, this should ship in uh, 2014 as well. So, from a phone perspective, 22 nanometer leading silicon, LTE, here already on data with 3G voice, here at the end of the year with LTE data and voice, and as I said, carrier aggregation next year, and it truly does work. So those are the areas that we kind of know today. <coughs> Phones, tablets, PCs, 